Welcome back everyone. As you can see, this is where we left off within the last episode. We created a registration form and we added some validation to this so that when a user actually inserts some invalid data into here and clicks submit, they are returned with some validation errors to ensure that our database is only getting the exact data that we expect it to receive. So looking at our node authentication process, we finished our validation on the back end. I said that we were going to be skipping over our front end for the time being, and we are going to be moving on to number eight, hashing our user's password. So if we look on over in our database, you'll see that we are now inserting users into our database using our registration form, given that all the data is correct. But there is one glaring issue with this database right now, and that is that our passwords are being stored in plain text. You'll see this is exactly what I typed in when I was creating a user over here in our registration form. And this is just not good at all for security purposes. Now, why is that? Well, if a hacker happens to get access to our database or some other kind of person, it could be an employee, it could be a friend. If someone were to get access to our database, they would essentially have access to all of our users' passwords. And it's very likely that our users are using the same password across multiple accounts. It's likely that they're using this password for something such as their Facebook account or even their bank account. And if a hacker is to have access to your social accounts, your Facebook account, your bank accounts, and even your own app, well, the hacker basically has access to your life. So obviously this is very, very serious. We want to make sure that we are not displaying this password in plain text just in case the circumstance happens in which a hacker is able to get access to our database. So what do we do here? Well, the answer is hashing. And hashing is simply scrambling up our password into something that's undecipherable. So think of hashing as a one-way scrambler. As soon as we put our plain text password through it, it is scrambled up into a long string of characters that is basically unscrambled, unscramblable. You can't go back as soon as you put the plain text password through it. It's just not possible by mathematical means. That doesn't mean that hashed passwords are uncrackable. They can be cracked with brute force attacks. But for the purpose of actually going back between the plain text password and the hashing password, it's just not possible through mathematical methods, unless you're using a weak algorithm. And the difference between hashing and encryption is, encryption is kind of like a two-way scrambler. We scramble up our password and then someone can unscramble it later on. And that's the difference between hashing and encryption is, hashing, we can't unscramble it. Encryption, we can unscramble it. So how do we get the passwords that we're submitting to the database using our form over here? How do we hash them up into something that the user cannot read or understand. Well, to do so, we are going to be using an NPM package called bcrypt. So to install bcrypt, we are going to head on over to terminal, open up a new tab within our project directory, and we are going to be typing yarn add bcrypt. And like always, if you are using NPM, you can install it with NPM. Let me go to a different tab here. You can install it with NPM install bcrypt dash dash save. So that way, it's updated within our package.json file. So once we have this package installed, let's go over what bcrypt is really quickly. So bcrypt is a hashing algorithm that's meant to transform a plain text password into something that is undecipherable. And you'll see exactly what I mean when we actually implement this within our app. And there are quite a few algorithms that we can use to actually hash a password. There are things such as MB5, things such as SHA, but bcrypt is probably the most secure and it's kind of like the de facto hashing algorithm for hashing passwords. And the reasoning behind that is because bcrypt is slow. As soon as you put your plain text password through the hashing algorithm, bcrypt is going to take a while to hash it. And that's actually a good thing for security purposes because the main thing that can crack hash passwords are brute force attacks. It's just a computer submitting passwords to our database over and over, over, over again really quickly until they get something right. But it can only guess passwords as fast as our hashing algorithm is. So if our hashing algorithm is slow, well, that's going to be slowing down the brute force attacker's computer in the process. So the whole point of bcrypt is to find a happy medium between usability and security. We want to make sure our hashing isn't too slow to annoy the user, but at the same time, we want to make sure it's not too fast to prevent brute force attackers from getting into our database. So with a brief intro on bcrypt complete, let's go ahead and start implementing this thing. To implement bcrypt, we are going to be taking these first two lines of code right here. And we're going to head on over to index.js. Let me full screen this for you. And right below Express Validator, let's go ahead and pull them in. So we are pulling in bcrypt to our index.js file, and we also have a variable called salt rounds, which we're defining as 10. You can think of this as the amount of rounds our plaintext password goes through to actually get hashed. Usually the higher this is, the slower it's going to take to actually hash the password. You'll see if I scroll down within the NPM site over here, there is a section on rounds. And it'll show you the relation between the amount of rounds there and 
the amount of hashes you can perform per second. So we're just going to stick with 10 for now, the default, and we are going to scroll on down where we are inserting users into our database. So let's scroll on back up to the boilerplate code that bcrypt provides, and you'll see that it provides a section on how to hash a password. There's technique number one, and there's technique number two down here. We are going to be going with technique number two because it's a little bit shorter, a little more succinct than the password hasher above it. So we are going to be copying this right here, and we are going to be wrapping our current insert function for our database. We're going to be wrapping it inside of that bcrypt function. So we're going to take this, indent this by a little bit, and then we're going to close it out with our bracket and parentheses. So you see the bcrypt function takes two things. It takes salt rounds and it takes a plain text password. So this plain text password, this is what we're actually submitting through our registration form. So you'll see that our request body password is being stored in this variable. This is our plain text password, so we're going to replace the plain text password field with our actual password that we're passing through. Next up is salt round. So salting is another part of hashing, which is important to understand. You can think of a salt as a randomly generated string of characters generated for each time a user is inserted into our database. And this random string of characters is added on to the user's plain text password whenever we're about to actually hash it through the hashing function. And this is good for security purposes because it adds length onto the end of our password. It makes brute force attackers, makes their lives a little harder because we're adding on a random string of characters to the end of a user's password. Now, if this is what we're storing in the database, how do we actually log in if the user only knows their plain text password? Well, bcrypt is going to be taking care of all the necessary steps for us. So things such as adding the salts onto the end of our password, bcrypt is going to be taking care of that automatically. Things such as actually hashing the password, you'll see bcrypt takes care of that as well. Once we actually get to the login section, I'll show you guys how to take the user's plain text password and compare it against the actual hash password in the database. So what we can do is we can grab the hash that bcrypt is returning to us, and we're going to be replacing our password over here with the hash instead. So with all of this in place, let's go ahead and refresh our registration page, revisit it so we can get rid of the errors, and we are going to be inserting a legit user to ensure that our user's password is being hashed and stored in the database. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I know, like I said, this doesn't look legit. I'm just typing in some characters to go quickly. And our password is going to be QWERTY, one exclamation point, capital Q. It's what we've been using all along. So let's go ahead and submit that. We have success. Let's check our database. And now you'll see that our password is being hashed up into a long string of characters. So if a hacker were ever to come across this by chance, well, now they can't actually view our user's password. It's protected from plain sight. And the only person who should know this password is the user who actually signed up, which is exactly what we want. So with this in place, we can go to our node authentication process and we can cross off number eight and also number nine. We're now successfully storing our user in the database with secure methods because we are now hashing our password and validating our backend. So I'm gonna end this one right here, guys. Once we head on over to the next episode, I'll show you how to log a user in using an authentication package called Passport. And this is what's going to basically prevent and allow users to access specific pages and allow users to access content that's meant specifically for them only when they're logged in. So get excited guys and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Later.